Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. This is Kim. Welcome back to Eastern Cryptid Encounters. Today's story is going to be about a guy who encountered Bigfoot at the young age of 16. If you all like these kind of stories, please reach over, smash that like button, hit that red subscribe button, and don't forget to hit that bell so you don't miss any notifications on videos I post daily. And guys, we just put up our PayPal and GoFundMe page, so if you want to help to support our channel, please consider donating. So with that being said, let's dive right into the encounter. I was 16 years old, and it was the last day of the Bucks Only season here in West Virginia. I had to wait on my dad to get home from his route to go hunting. When dad got home, he said, son, I don't think this will be a good day to go hunting as it is 60 degrees outside. I was disappointed, but when dad says no, you never question him. So I walked to the Chevy K5 Blazer to unload the rifles and anything else in the back. Just as I was about to carry up the rifles, my dad stepped on the porch and said, Son, we are going. Mom stepped in and told Dad that I had been up since 5 a.m. waiting and double-checking everything to make sure I was ready when he got home. Mom had fixed us a few sandwiches to take with us, and, and we off we went. I had a huge smile on my face and told Dad that this was the day I get my first buck deer. That smile, that smile of his when he was thinking, yeah, right. As we drove for two hours, I begged Dad to let me go by myself, and he just said, we'll see. We finally got there, and I got the rifles out and quickly loaded my rifle and put my blaze orange on like Dad taught me to. I then asked again, can I go out the ridge, and Dad said, yes. I was a happy teenager as I was grown up now. I walked them out to the spot that I had told Dad I would be in and cleared a place to sit down. I had been there for about half hour when three does come running from my left and stopped in front of me. They were winded and had their tongues out. They stayed there about 30 seconds and I just knew a buck would come along shortly. After about five minutes, I heard some grunting sounds from the way the does came. I turned a bit in that direction and listened as I heard leaves crunching. I saw some movement on top of the huge boulder about 20 feet from my left. I thought it was a red squirrel. I kept listening and watching, but the crunching stopped. It was very quiet as no birds or chipmunks were making any noise. I thought that was strange, but I just knew that buck was going to step out soon. At this point, I was on pins and needles, waiting and the crunching started again. I raised my rifle to my shoulder to prepare for the shot. I saw something brown at the boulder and lowered my head to the rifle stock. Then this huge, eight-foot, tall man-like creature stepped out. I was amazed. It had a wrinkled face with dark skin. It had arms as big as my thighs, and the width of this creature had to be in four to five-foot range. It had long hair on its arms and legs. The hair on the chest was shorter but thick. You could tell it had huge pectoral muscles and six pack abs. This creature was looking in the direction the deer, the deer went like I wasn't there. After about 20 to 30 seconds, it, looks, it looked at me with a look of astonishment like, how did you get there? It, start, it stared at me for what seemed like an eternity but was only maybe 15 seconds. It changed its expression from astonishment to anger at me being there. It bared its teeth and growled. It took a step towards me and I just knew I was now going to be dinner. As it started to take a second step, I pulled the hammer back on my 30-30 rifle and settled the open sights right on its mouth. When I cocked the hammer, it growled, but very quickly changed its face to a look of, oh no, trouble. It then went to a thing type of look and started figuring. It turned its whole body to the right and then to the left, looking for an out. It turned back toward the boulder and with the leap, it was off and running up the holler, shielded from my view by that huge boulder. It is at this time I got up on my feet and kind of jogged up the hill to the road. I then hightailed it back to the blazer with my rifle fully cocked. I left it that way because I thought it was going to come after me. I was almost to the blazer when Dad spoke up and he automatically knew something was wrong. 
I just told Dad that I wanted to go home now, and Dad said okay, because he could see I was scared and white as a sheet. We unloaded the rifles, and I took my vest off and ran up and jumped in the passenger seat. Dad got in and asked what was wrong, and I just looked at him. Dad asked many times, but I either cried or just buried my face in my vest. When we got to the interstate, I told Dad everything, and he said, Are you saying you saw the Boggy Creek Monster? I said yes, that this thing was bigger. Dad asked if I was making this up because I shot a doe by mistake. And I said, no. I said, Dad, I know better than to lie to you. What I saw was a Bigfoot, and it scared me almost to death. Dad said he believed me, but never to tell this to anyone. He said, never tell your grandma or mama. They will never let any of us go hunting again. It took me a year and four months to go hunting again, and for about five years, I never went to the woods before daylight and was at the truck by dusk. Thanks, guys. Feel free to leave your comments at the bottom, and uh, I will see you later.